I witnessed my first Calgary stampede in 1968, and with due respect to those old cowboys like Jack and Dwayne Danes and Lee Phillips and Russ Peake, I thought the Flying Deuces stunt riding was the real stars of the show. A four-year survey of the Stampede fans during that era showed that Joy and Jerry were more popular than Larry Mahan. I don't think that was ever released, though, by the Stampede. Tonight, we're here to honor older sister Jerry. But Joy, who lives in Wyoming, says her heart and mind will be here with Jerry tonight. Joy told me that Jerry is the real leader of the family, was always, but was always proud of her kid sister. She said on her first day of school, Jerry took her by, her by the hand and introduced her to all her friends, which was the entire school. Jerry and her husband, Lee Phillips, a steer wrestling champion and former CRCA president, always give back with special ro rodeo schools, and Jerry teaches 25 kids a week at her trick riding school. You can check her website out at trickriding.com. An unforgettable memory was her performance at Madison Square Gardens in New York, storing her horses in the basement, then taking them up to the show ring by elevator. And then her dad capped it all by driving their loaded horse trailer the wrong way down a Manhattan street. Watch the video as we salute the high-flying Jerry Deuce. of the audience. Jerry Deuce Phillips was born in Claire's home, Alberta, and it didn't take long for her to achieve greatness in the world of rodeo. At the age of 11, she won her first Canadian championship in the barrel racing event. In total, Phillips won the barrel race an astonishing nine times. In 1975, Phillips became the first Canadian barrel racer to ever qualify for the national finals rodeo held in Oklahoma City. She would later go on to qualify for a total of three national finals. During Jerry's rodeo career, she won a total of 16 trophy saddles, six bronzes, four commemorative Winchester trophy rifles, as well as countless buckles and horse trailers. Another element of Jerry's rodeo career was the art of trick riding. She teamed up with her sister Joy and they became world renowned as the Flying Deuces. They performed stunts around the world, including Madison Square Garden, Expo 67 in Montreal, the Calgary Stampede, as well as the opening ceremonies for the 1988 Calgary Olympic Games. Jerry has also traveled to Bermuda and Japan to help train local horses in those communities. Really concentrate on the corner. She continues her teaching today through her very own trick riding school in Carsland, Alberta, where she trains horses, teaches riders the ropes of trick riding, and even performs as a stunt performer in the film industry. Her rodeo career was topped off with an induction into the Canadian Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame in 1997, the first woman ever inducted. This year, as Jerry Deuce Phillips enters the Alberta Sports Hall of Fame, she does so as the first ever female inductee in the sport of rodeo. Alberta Sports Hall of Fame 2010 inductee, Jerry Deuce Phillips. I know one thing, those dino football players couldn't trick ride. But by three o'clock in the morning, they might. Fire, Jerry. Oh, 
all, I'm so happy to be here tonight. There are so many friends, relatives, family, and acquaintances, and congratulations to all the inductees. It's just a fabulous affair. The Hall of Fame staff, volunteers, uh, everyone. It's been a great first class uh, evening tonight. But there's one thing I have to do before I get started. I was in the lobby oh, just after we got back from the Hall of Fame, and one of the dinos approached me and said, uh, please don't take your jacket off. <laughs> oh, just had to lighten it up a little bit here. My heroes have always been cowboys. And one in particular, my dad, Frank Deuce, was a champion cowboy. And he and my Uncle Tom, Uncle Bob, they're up there riding the open range. And they were such an inspiration. And, and when I was young, we, my brother, my sister, and I, we rode, we broke horses, we trained, we, we Dad would bring us spoiled ponies he'd bought, and we'd have to straighten them around. And so we, we got all this experience, and a lot of work went with it, but it was, you know, all good. And my dad had such a, such a great uh, ability to handle horses. I think he, in his day, he was maybe one of the first horse whisperers. And with the training that, you know, he gave all three of us, that uh, it just seemed like a natural progression after he retired in rodeo. We got into this horse business and then it just, off we went to rodeo as well. And it's such a, uh, it, for us it was such a family experience. You know, with my dad, had a, he had a great eye for uh, buying a good horse, so we were always so well mounted. So, you know, that was the first big step and, you know, we, we learned well from him. And then I had a mother that had many gifts, but, and she is here tonight, but she? she's right over there on that table. But she was an amazing seamstress and costume designer. And so we had, you know, a dad that could give us great horses, and we had a mom that made us look fabulous. She was, I mean, small town grand, and here we are ordering fabric from New York City, La May and sequins, and, and she totally revised what trick writers wore and did and how to, how to make us so flashy. So basically, you know, there wasn't much left for us to do, you know, with a mom and a dad like that. It, it was, and then, but then you get the horses, hey, and, and if I do have a, a true gift, it is understanding a horse, which again, you know, my dad taught me all that. And I bond with them. They become such good friends to me that, again, it's like riding a bike. Hey, I've done it so many times, and I love horses so much that I really feel that I haven't, you know, I had a passion, but there's so many other, other people that help, help bring us, you know, to where we are. So back in the day, we were kids, we weren't very old, and we had a, a school bus converted into a camper and bunk beds in the back, you know, and I think my brother had to sleep on the floor. And he, he started out steer riding and got into novice bronc riding and, and in the young days and won the Canadian championship in novice bronc riding. And uh, Joy and I in barrel racing, we were fierce competitors, but we just cheered for each other. It was, didn't matter who won. And uh, uh, the trick riding was sort of an outlet for the wilder side of the Deuce Girls. We got to live fearlessly, and, and uh, we didn't really have a good teacher back then. My dad thought he knew all how to do it. We bought a book called uh, 144 Ways to Break Your Neck, Trick and Fancy Riding by Frank <laughs> Dean. And we went through it page by page, and I, I have to admit some of the things are wrong in that book. And, you know, I could write one now. And <laughs> But anyway, we loaded up this school bus and a four-horse trailer, and occasionally we even had to have my brother haul a two-horse trailer along, and, and we went all over the place. We, we hauled to from Vancouver to Montreal. We went from the Cow Palace in San Francisco to 
Madison Square Gardens. That was because my dad had been there too in his day of rodeoing. I was so thrilled to go there. And, uh, you know, and one of my stories was about that one way street going the wrong way with five lanes of traffic coming at us. And they were very polite. They stopped. We turned around. And my dad was a little bit put out with me because I was on the map. I was supposed to tell him when to turn. So, and we, but we had a lot of fun in those days. And I can't stress any event, like rodeo, and, and you know, Christine and I were talking to um, in her wrestling world, the, the camaraderie, the family that you have, the extended family, uh, th there is, there's nothing like it. You know, you, you have friends all over the world, really, and people that you can call and, con and uh, contact and ask for help if you're stuck in Oklahoma or something. And, and uh, so the, the family part of it was great for me. The best time of my life, I think, were those days in that school bus. And some of them were hot days. We had no air conditioning, just a fan. And if you can imagine the Midwest states, you know, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, high humidity, you know, driving in that bus. And my dad persevered. And, and uh, one time I talked him into going home from Detroit by way of Albuquerque. So <laughs> that was one of my favorite rodeos, and by George, he ended up taking me there. So that was pretty good. We had some great times, and uh, um, I, 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 like I say, it's, it, for us, it was like riding a bike. We were given a lot of tools, and I just seemed to have a little lucky charm in my pocket. And, and I'm so grateful for my family back then. And like I said, my heroes have always been cowboys, and I married a good one. Lee Phillips. <laughs> and, you know, we, we've continued. We do try and, and give back quite a bit, and, and I've had a lot of fun with my trick riding school since and why I started in 03 with 12 students, and it's just continuing to, to carry on, and I'm teaching younger and younger students these days, but that is what it's all about, and... Uh, um, and I want to thank Gary Allison for nominating me. That was a blast from the past. He was a sports writer for the Lethbridge Herald years ago. And uh, I want to thank my friends and family that came this, all this way to enjoy this evening with me. It makes it very special. And uh, uh, our wonderful girls, thank you for coming. And just everyone have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Great job. Thank you. Yeah, but, don't, but don't forget your job. Oh, yeah. And you got your time. <laughs>